I've been thinking. School is about to start in like a month. And I know if you're anything like me, this was around the time where I started to freak out about NYU. I didn't know anything about it really. I didn't really know anyone who, who goes there. So I was like trying to do all the research I can. I looked up blogs, I looked on their website, I looked up YouTube videos. So the video you're about to watch is gonna be the first in a however many part series about the inside scoop at NYU. So in this video, I talk about generally campus life and academics but if there's anything under those two categories that you don't see in this video that you want to know about definitely comment and I will make sure to put that in a later video so the next few weeks is gonna be very like tailored to people who are at or are about to go to NYU so I'm sorry to everyone else but the video you're about to watch I filmed that and like another half to that so that's what I'm gonna post on Friday. I just want to give you like a leg up so you feel more comfortable going into a new school and especially a school like NYU. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Here it is. So if you're like me, you like to prepare. And what I did before I went to NYU was look up every single thing that you could possibly know. I went on blogs, I looked on the NYU website even, and none of what I actually researched before I went could prepare me for what actually went on. And it's not like it was this huge drastic difference, but there's definitely some stuff that only the people who actually go to the school know and that no one really tells you before you actually go. So that's what I'm here for. Today, we're gonna be talking about all of the things that no one really tells you before you go to school, particularly NYU. So first I wanna get the boring stuff out of the way and talk about academics. NYU is a pretty hard school. Um, it's definitely not impossible. Like. You have every single potential to get an A in every single class that you take and get on the dean's list and graduate with flying colors and go to grad school and become a lawyer and become a doctor. NYU doesn't hold you back from attaining your goals, certainly. It's definitely not an impossible school, but it is pretty difficult. This is really the case for any school, but NYU specifically, finals week is gonna be really rough. The way I got through it was I had a great group of friends and we all went to NYU library together to sit down and study for like seven hours. And I know that doesn't sound really fun, but it's it's fun, you know, misery loves company. <laughs> so it was really fun to have that, you know, sense of unity and have all your friends there studying with you. What I really will say during finals week or when you have three exams coming up the next week or eight essays to write and all seems miserable, definitely try to keep a positive attitude. If you're a positive person and if you you know if you see the glass half full and if you're really optimistic you have a leg up on literally every single person in New York New York City is a wonderful place but its environment can encourage you to indulge in feeling miserable all the time and you don't have to I really sound like my life coach right now but you don't always have to be miserable remember to keep a positive attitude throughout your academics and anything else that may come your way now I want to talk about professors I think NYU generally overall has really good professors I'm gonna be a sophomore at NYU next year so I don't I haven't encountered every single professor at the university, obviously, but generally I've had a really good experience with my professors, especially in some really hard classes, and sometimes I didn't understand things. My professors were always so willing to help. And the best thing about the professors at NYU is that they actually have real world experiences. Connections are everything in New York, so definitely make sure to utilize that from your professors because they're right there in front of you. Albert is NYU's comprehensive guide to picking classes and to dropping classes and whatever. When you get to NYU, someone will explain to you how Albert works and you'll know it's really not that hard to figure out but picking classes is really hard and no one really tells you about any deadlines I'm on the email list but some emails never really got out to me about how to pick classes and how to manage them and how to drop them and when the deadlines were so that was a really hard thing for me um, the summer before freshman year because I had to figure it all out myself but you don't have to do that NYU actually has a lot of how-to guides for everything so if you look like I just looked up on my laptop right here like NYU Albert the first link that came up was Albert but the second link that came up was how to register and like all of NYU's how-to guides to use Albert which is all grand and you will figure out how to use Albert eventually and it will be somewhat easy to navigate and comprehend but Albert is literally the worst it's the worst. It crashes all the time. You will not get into every class you want to take. It sucks. I want to talk about the waiting list for a little because on Albert, if a class is closed, sometimes that class will have an option to get on the waiting list. Albert will tell you that you are able to get on a waiting list for a class if you want. You are not. You can, there is no waiting list option. It, like, if it is possible for you to get into the class, 
it will say waiting list. And all that really means is that once school starts during the drop ad period, which is technically the first two weeks of class around there, I think, there is a possibility of that class opening up. That's all that means. You don't add yourself onto a waiting list. There is no like waiting list. It's a sticky process. There should definitely be a better way of figuring this all out, but there's not. So you have to learn to tolerate Albert, but you definitely don't have to learn to love it. Now that we got that out of the way, I want to talk about advisors. You will have an advisor assigned to you no matter what school you're in. Uh, so I'm personally in Steinhardt and I love my advisor. Whenever I email her with a question, she always responds like the next day or like in two days. She's super sweet. However, I have heard of some advisors who don't really respond to emails until like a week later. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Your advisor will not do everything for you. Your advisor won't pick your classes for you. They won't get you into a class. They won't get you an internship and they certainly won't get you a job. Your advisor will give you advice, but you have to know what you want. You have to go, you know, how do I do this? And they'll tell you. You can't just email them and go, what do I do? Because they're, they're not, they're just gonna be like, they won't know how to help you. All freshmen have to take a seminar sort of introducing them to NYU and into their school and their major, but but you really do have to be proactive. The seminar will only tell you so much, so you really have to go out there yourself and figure it out. NYU overall is a really, like, you gotta figure it out school. No one really tells you what to do. I wanted to be as independent as possible in college, so NYU is definitely the school for me to go and to be plunged headfirst into the adult world. That sort of adult world theme applies to everything. It applies to how you live, it applies to how you get everywhere, it applies to your classes, and it applies to how you do in school. It's very like you, you, you. You have to do everything. No one's gonna hold your hand or baby you. That leads me into the next thing I wanna talk about, uh, the resources that NYU provides. Like I just said, you have to be really proactive, but NYU has a lot of really helpful resources that will help you. My sweet mate, freshman year, she has a job already teaching and she is a sophomore and she has a job teaching, doing what she loves. And she got an interview for that job from the Wasserman Center. It was career fairs, you can find a job or an internship, you can prepare yourself for a job or an internship or for an interview. They'll do mock interviews with you and they'll look over your resume and it's a really helpful tool. I've utilized the Wasserman Center for basically all of my freshman year uh, looking for internships and stuff and they've come in real handy, like they're awesome. If you go to the NYU website, they'll tell you more about the resources that Wa the Wasserman Center offers and you'll also learn about this in your student seminar. I'm not even trying to sugarcoat anything. NYU does have a lot of really good resources, but you just have to know how to use them, if that makes sense. So this is for anyone who is thinking about going into Steinhardt specifically. I don't know how uh, CA CAS or Stern or any other or you know Tisch. I don't know how any of those schools do their curriculum, but Steinhardt. Um, any major under Steinhardt, especially the MCC major, there is a designated curriculum that you have to follow all four years. It doesn't tell you every single class you have to take. You have to figure that out by yourself. But there are some required classes that you have to take. And if the specific class isn't required, it's under a required category, such as, you know, you have to do your liberal arts core. Like you have to take some language classes and you have to do some math classes and science and history, all that. My advice to you is make a Google sheet with all of the required classes that you have to take under which semester or year that you're planning to take them. I was required to do this for my student seminar, but I'm not sure everyone else is. So this is me telling you that if you don't want to drive yourself crazy senior year, when your advisor is telling you that you can graduate because you didn't take three classes, you can hold up your sheet and say, oh yes I did, look, they're right here. I'm only about to be a sophomore at NYU. I made my spreadsheet and I have never felt more on my shit. Yeah, okay, so that's all I have to talk about academics. That was so long, I'm so sorry, but now we're gonna go on to campus life. I wanna talk about dorms. Freshman year, since I'm not living there anymore, I feel like it's safe to tell you guys where I used to live. I used to live in Third Avenue North, which is a freshman residence hall. I really liked where I lived. There's a dining hall in Third North, and there are three towers. So there's an East, West, and South Tower, and the laundry rooms in Third North are fantastic. If you live in Third North, you will never have to wait for a washer, dryer, nothing. It's awesome because I went with my friend in, who lived in Brittany to go do her laundry a few times and she had to wait like at least 15 minutes to get her stuff in the washer and you should just never have to do that. So I personally really liked living in Third North. Everything was really convenient. It's only like a 10, 15 minute walk from campus and I really liked everyone in my building. Not to mention my RA was like the best person I've ever met. The only two dorms that I think are labeled as like the worst freshman dorms are Weinstein and Rubin. Uh, Weinstein because just the rooms are like really small but Rubin I also heard was bad because there's no air conditioning and in the summer 
it sucks. <laughs> That's just what I heard. Um, I've never personally been into any of the rooms in Weinstein or Rubin, but even if you have the worst of the worst rooms and the worst of the worst dorm buildings, you're gonna be fine. None of the dorms are prisons. They all have their charm, and personally, I really like N the NYU housing situation. You'll be fine. Let's talk about like the dorm rooms. In each dorm room, there's an extra long twin size bed. And keep this in mind when you're buying your sheets. Don't get twin size sheets, get XL twin size sheets. Um, a lot of my friends made the mistake of getting twin size sheets and they got to their room and they didn't know what to do. Uh, there's a desk and a chair and there's drawer space. So you're either gonna have like a long drawer set or two small ones that you can put under your bed or like stack on top of each other and then there's also hanging space so either a closet or a wardrobe cabinet i want to address some stuff that you can and can't bring um or that you you should bring my last video was a dorm room haul for sophomore year but i did i obviously didn't mention everything that you need to buy for your room i bought a three inch foam mattress um but i know there are tons of places that you can just get a mattress pad and be fine so you're either going to be in an apartment with a kitchen and a common room or you're going to be in a traditional dorm without any of those it's just going to be like a room with beds so just Keep in mind what room you have so you can bring stuff accordingly. I lived in an apartment my freshman year. I didn't know that NYU would not provide you um, with a microwave. So if a microwave is something that you feel like you will utilize, bring one. The first thing I wanna say about roommates, don't feel pressure to be best friends with your roommates, sweet mates, whatever. I personally loved my roommate. I got really lucky. Like I heard some roommate horror stories when I lived at NYU my freshman year. When I first got there though, I'm gonna be really honest, when I first got there, our energy levels were so different. Like she really loved to sleep and she really loved to, you know, sort of wind down. So we didn't mesh for like the first two weeks, but then once we recognized our differences and accepted that, you know, we're not gonna be best friends for life, we really like became closer. Me and her went to brunch like every weekend and she's honestly like one of the coolest people I know. If you are best friends with your roommate, like awesome. Like my friend uh, who goes to Scranton, her and her roommate are best friends friends like they do everything together and it's so cute and they don't have a problem with it but I'm what I'm just saying is don't feel like pressured to always hang out or don't feel pressured to be like sisters with your roommate because that's not always the case I know this should go unsaid but be considerate don't just be considerate for like the first three weeks of school be considerate all year keep in mind that it is not just your room it is your roommates room as well and you really have to respect that the last thing I'm gonna say about roommates people from NYU come from every single walk of life imaginable just because you were raised a certain way does not mean that everyone in your apartment or your roommate will be raised the exact same way you were. Your etiquette might not be the same etiquette as your roommates. And everyone also has different cultures. So something that your roommate might be doing that you think is really weird, it, it's not weird to them. Do you know what I mean? So just be kind and be compassionate. But if you have a serious problem, the first thing that I would recommend is to actually talk to your roommate. Have a kind, calm conversation about what's bothering you and you're sure to work it out. But if you're not, there's this thing at NYU called Bed for Bed and it's for people who have problems with their roommates who want to swap rooms. So it is definitely possible if you feel like you certainly cannot get along with your roommate to switch rooms, but I would definitely suggest trying to work it out first. Okay, we're going away from dorms now. I also want to acknowledge the whole no campus, no community stigma that surrounds NYU. And I want to be careful about this because for a lot of people, no campus means no community. It is really hard for some people to make friends at NYU. You really just have to put yourself out there. Another thing that I wanna say about friends is that you are who your friends are. Make sure that the people you surround yourself with have good morals and do responsible good things because if you surround yourself with people who whose morals are going down the toilet, your morals will go down the toilet as well. Because there isn't really a campus at NYU, when everyone makes their friend this is true for all of the people i know i don't know what your experience is or will be but for all the people i know once you have your friend group you sort of tend to stick together and you tend to be heavily influenced by your friend group you will find yourself wanting to be a part of what they're a part of and that's just the environment at nyu so what i'm trying to say is really pick your friends wisely another thing about the campus people will try to tell you that kimmel is like the bustling center for student life at nyu that's not true at all it's really not if you ever took a tour of NYU, you will remember your tour guide telling you that Kimmel is where everyone goes all the time, you know, to study or to, no. Um, I go to Bobst or stay in my apartment to study. I've only ever been in Kimmel to 
get coffee at Pete's or to go to class. Washington Square Park is the center of campus, yes. Um, all the classroom buildings are, they do surround Washington Square Park, but that is also not where you will make friends. I'm telling you right now, if you are about to be a freshman at NYU, you will make your friends during Welcome Week activities. Uh, from your roommates or with your roommates or from your classes. So definitely make sure to put yourself out there. Um, I'm just gonna end on the whole campus thing with this. No campus does not necessarily equate to no community. I know that my best friends right now are from NYU. They're amazing people and I love them all so much. Hi, shout out to you guys if you're watching this video. It wasn't that hard for me to find my place at NYU. I love my friends and I found it very easy to find a community in such a large school. High school to college is a pretty big deal and there will definitely be some pitfalls. But for me overall, my freshman year was a wonderful experience and I found it super easy to make friends and to find my community.